Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we're going to talk about dank memes from the dank memes from Site19 subreddit. So let's start with... The Foundation are the good guys for trying to exterminate the human race in SCP-5000. Me. Just because you're correct doesn't mean... I don't even think that that's true. Doesn't mean you're right. Anyone who's trying to exterminate the human race is wrong you there you can create some sort of fictional justification for it though scp 5000 doesn't it lets you assume there's some sort of fictional justification for it but you don't know that there's some background that kind of gives you an in indication of why they're doing it but in the end there is no justification for the elimination of the human race, at least not one that I, as a human, can understand to be morally correct. <laughs> Period. Uh, of course, there are people out there who think this way, who think that, you know, all human uh, humanity is evil and must be destroyed or whatever. There are people that think that. Those people are wrong. Most safe SCPs are more interesting than Keter or Apollyon ones. He's out of line, but he's right. Okay, I get where this is coming from. Interestingly enough, this uh, hot take, lukewarm take, but uh, <laughs> it's not a bad thing to say. I think, though, the reason why a lot of safe SCPs, maybe not, actually, because there's different reasons why someone might say this. The one reason that I can think of that's a little problematic and, and the problematic is not the right word uh, not correct wrong the the wrong reason to think this is because uh safe scps oftentimes can be simple and have no narrative attached to them therefore people who dislike narrative based scps uh, oftentimes like those better because a keter or an apollyon not always but a keter and apollyon usually has some baggage attached to it some story that's already there uh, and a lot of people like SCPs, not me. I'm mean, going to have to make this clear because uh, this is the point I'm making here. And just because I don't doesn't mean other people who do are wrong. It's opinion, um, not fact. But some people dislike SCPs with any sort of narrative at all. They like to take the item and just in their mind do imagination stuff. Like, this. these are the people who show up in chats if you involve yourself in any SCP chats and ask questions about their favorite pet SCPs over and over and over again. Hey, what would happen if you put SCP-096 up against SCP-049? Hey, do you think SCP-049's mask is actually a, is actually a part of it? Or do you think maybe the SCP Foundation is wrong and it's a, it's a it's actual mask on top of a bird beak? And so on and so forth. They'll come up with all these questions and all these theories and that's the enjoyable part of it for them. And that's fine. It's just not the enjoyable part for me. Now, that isn't necessarily what this person is saying, though it is uh, a thing that someone who thinks that way would say uh, often if they read enough SCPs. Because, again, there are plenty of Keter and Apollyon that are pretty simple. Well, maybe not Apollyon, uh, but plenty of Keter SCPs that are very simple that way. Um, but as you start to get further along into the SCP uh, lore and get further on in the numbers, you'll find more and more safe SCPs that are a little simpler, a little less involved, a little bit more just this is the anomaly and isn't it interesting? And Keters, which are, you know, 5,000 to 20,000 words long with extra addendums and all this other stuff. And... Uh, I don't know that any one of them is superior, but it does depend on what you come to the SCP Foundation for. So, and not everyone's the same. First time visitor. Look, I've been around the internet, okay? Whatever it is, I'll understand. There's nothing about this I understand. I think this stems strongly from the problem that a lot of people get into, which is they'll, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? When they want to introduce somebody to the SCP Foundation, they don't think what SCP would be good to introduce them with. Not everyone does this. I, I always have to make that caveat because some people are, you know, think when they do this. They don't think often of 
about which SCP would be best to introduce them with. Something simple with a hint of narrative or uh, a very simple narrative that ties up before the end of the article. Something with a nice twist in it that gives people an idea that, oh, this is real fiction. No, they they have a favorite that they have developed over however long they've been on the site after they got introduced somehow in a way that attracted them to the uh, SCP wiki. And then they kept reading and kept reading and kept reading. And then one day they found their favorite, right? But at that point, they had a long, strong, uh, rooted understanding of the SCP Foundation, the wiki, probably most of the GOIs, if not understanding of them, at least a cursory knowledge of them enough to uh, accept when they show up in an article. And so now they've got a favorite, but it's it, it involves understanding to a level that a new person might not have. And they don't go, hey, let's introduce them to something that works. Let's introduce them to my favorite because that's what you want to share. And then people read it and they're like, I don't get this. There are different kinds of SCPs. There are SCPs for entry-level readers and there are SCPs for advanced readers. And there's room for both on the website. The thing is, is this is important. Um, you might think that SCPs for advanced readers would find trouble getting traction. But everybody who takes the time to register for the website generally understands the SCP to a point. So advanced reader SCPs, and that's the only terminology I can use for it, uh, a lot of them exist. They're not going to get downvoted because everybody who can vote understands them. And this is the disconnect between on and off, quote unquote, on and off site people. Bees in our universe, bees in the SCP universe. I mean, yeah, I guess. See, the thing is, uh, I get the inclination at some point. I've, I remember when I was in school, um, sometimes we would go outside and we would play outside. Um, you know, depending on how old we were. It's, actually, that's not true. I think when I was in junior high, yeah, we still went outside for breaks and played and stuff like that. But what we ended up doing uh, oftentimes involved interactions with nature and one time i well not one time a lot of times there would be bees or yellow jackets or hornets or and so on and so forth i think the hornets and yellow jackets probably spoiled people's because bees are not particularly aggressive if you leave bees alone they'll leave you alone uh and and in fact it can be quite difficult sometimes to in, to get a bee to sting you uh hornets and wasps on the other hand are assholes but <laughs> So, and the confusion between them, I think, causes people a lot of problems. They just see a buzzing, stinging insect and they freak out. But there are people out there with fear of bees, even if it's not full-on phobia levels, although some people have that too. Uh, there are people with a straight-up fear of bees. And so, some of those people wrote for the SCP Wiki, and they wrote some stories that were well-received. Uh, you write what you know, and that's, uh, that's what happened to bees in the SCP universe. Governments of the word tiring to, I'm going to, uh, governments of the world trying to establish peaceful diplomatic relations with an alien civilization. The SCP Foundation, after establish, I assume establishing, peaceful diplomatic relations with communist spiders, Seurine crusaders i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right or if it's even spelled correctly because of all the other spelling errors but it may be that word i've never seen it before christian animals in a bunch of parallel universes it's showtime one of my absolute favorite scps on the scp wiki and an example of how you can use implied narrative in a story without actually telling the reader what exactly happened is the one where the SCP Foundation makes contact with an alternate Earth, essentially. And this alternate Earth has got a whole different technological advancement level. Uh, they have much better physics than us and much worse biology science than us. Uh, so they don't understand necessarily germ theory all that well, but they can make particle accelerators. 
I don't know how realistic that is in the grand scheme of things, but, you know. So the SCP Foundation, you know, makes contact with them over a long period of time. And they learn a lot about how they have like a world government. And it's a hegemonic sort of world government where they don't necessarily conquer people. They just culturally absorb them over time. And the SCP Foundation doesn't really make too much of a note of that. I mean, there is some references to it. But you can see where the SCP Foundation would be seriously worried in getting in a diplomatic or even any sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, exchange of peoples and cultures with a group like that that's highly advanced in physics, which is already dangerous, but also whose conquering of other peoples comes from, as I said, a hegemonic imperialism sort of thing. So, at some point, a flu epidemic breaks out in the other world. And there are very, very subtle hints that it could be because of mishandling on the side of the Foundation. And that's the funny part. So the subtle hints don't hint at what I actually ended up uh, deciding on. And I'm telling this story like it, like, but it is similar to this and it reminded me of it. <laughs> I could do, maybe I should do videos where I just summarize SCPs like this. But they make a very subtle hint that it's the SCP Foundation's fault, that they screwed up and accidentally through handling of the cable. See, there's just a, it's a hole about this size. So it's not big enough for people to go through, but there's a cable that they use to communicate. And during, there's a, a note before it happens that there's some maintenance done on the cable and replacements are done. It's been a while since I read it, so I could be getting some of these details wrong, but meh. It's the, the digital justice is good enough. What happens is they get this flu epidemic and it is serious to the point where like these people may end up being completely wiped out. So the SCP Foundation in, in their uh, grand, what's the word I'm looking for here, altruism, which is not something the SCP Foundation is necessarily well known for, decide to send over a vaccine. And this is it's is. Wow, this is topical for our current time and uh, time and events. They send over a vaccine and everything goes great for a while. They vaccinate their entire population and the flu epidemic stops. And then a little time passes and they realize that they have been sterilized completely. Not completely. I think there's like very, very small, very small population growth. It's something that's not immediately apparent to them. But then, you know, give it a few months. They managed to get the that's the thing about their world government. They managed to get the flu vaccine to everybody in just, you know, a few months. And then a few months passes and they're like, wait, why aren't we having any new births? And they get really pissed off and they attack us eventually, like their governments eventually break down and eventually they start trying to attack us and destroy us. Uh, but I always like the base and it's not really fully hinted at in the article itself. But I mean, I should say it is hinted at, but it's not explicitly said where they actually were such a threat that the SCP Foundation decided that they needed to be dealt with, or a scientist just decided on his own that they needed to be dealt with, and they sent the flu epidemic over, and then they sent the vaccine over, and then they decided, hey, let's just eliminate them once and for all. And that is the SCP Foundation when they do first contact. See, a lot of people talk about their successful ones where they don't have to kill everybody, but if the SCP Foundation... See, the anomaly isn't the other world. The other anomaly was the portal. They have to secure, contain, protect the portal, but the people on the other side... SCP Foundation don't give a fuck about them. Same thing with these. The reason why a lot of these is because the anomaly is the thing that they're making peaceful diplomatic contacts with. But that ain't the SCP Foundation's only thing. These guys are assholes. <laughs> After that really long aside about an SCP uh, and first contact, uh, this probably ran a little bit long, but 
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has. I'll let you know, Patreon backing right now is super helpful. Um, regardless of what you think about it, and I'm not gonna denigrate the animation channels. I think they do a pretty good job, but um, I feel like the prevalence of them, and I've looked at the numbers, has strongly impacted uh, advertising revenue for everybody. Um, because the SCP content is getting less high quality ads for like a better way to put it. Um, and that is also affecting our traffic eventually because YouTube doesn't send traffic to lower quality ads play, or ad placement videos because they make less money from it. So they tend to want to send them to other videos. That said, my advertising revenue from YouTube is down really low at this point not i mean views are i still get about a hundred thousand views a month and i'm I mean, that's mo mostly because i continuously make videos the easiest way if you want to keep supporting this channel to support this channel is to head on over to patreon.com forward slash d sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has including dr j redacted and sinjariki who have both pledged at a hundred dollars it's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.